Mercedes AMG One is the fastest production spec vehicle around the Nürburgring Nordschleife. In case you haven't watched the onboard yet, check it out first and later I will tell you a thing or two what I think about this amazing achievement.
First of all, you might be asking yourself, what the hell is this night at the museum? No, it's a night at the Nürburgring because actually right now it is midnight, the day of the release, because AMG was kind enough to send me the press release and all the materials to make this video. So for which a very big thank you, AMG. So now let's get started. 6 minutes 35, 183. Mercedes AMG 1 is number one on Nürburgring Nordschleife. This is the title of the press release. So 6 minutes 35, is this fast? Well, of course it is fast. This is 8 seconds faster than the previous lap placard holder, the GT2 RS MR or T equipment as you may want to call it. But let's also be honest here in a way, because beginning of the year when I started to realize that AMG was going for a lap time attempt with the one, I already said back then, if they are not going to do anything below 6 minutes 30, especially for a caliber of that car, they should better just be quiet about it. And now 6 minutes 35, yes it is fast, but it may raise a suspicion. So first of all, we need to look at it actually as not simply as black and white, but there are some things in between. Most importantly, those were far from ideal track conditions, just like it was the case in 2019, I believe, or no, 2020 with the Black Series, yeah, uh, with AMG Black Series, it was also wet, cold, damp, and also Kesselschen was wet, and in this case it was wet and even dirty, so Mara Engel, the driver, had to lift significantly. So can the car go sub 6.30? I will tell you eventually, probably yes, if we not only take the lap uh, or let's say track conditions into account. There are lots of other things that play crucial role into it. So far from optimal track conditions. Moreover, according to the press release, they only had four runs on that particular day. And as we will find out later, it's not just a simple car where you go, get in and floor it. There's lots of things that you need to take into consideration. When do you deploy the RS? How are you going to use the hybrid system? So the, how are you going to deploy the electrical energy? So I'm sure there are lots of things that you need to test out. And when you only have basically four laps to test it out, it may become tricky. So that's a very important thing as well. Now, moreover, uh, another interesting thing is that it is, according to press release, it is the very first lap record or lap time in a category of hypercars or more officially the super sports cars. What this means is that it opens, opens new possibilities or invitations to other manufacturers, for example Aston Martin Valkyrie, I'm looking at you, maybe later on the Rimac Nevera that might probably fall into this or will it fall under EVs? The question is, what is a hypercar? Does it need to cost more than 1 million euros or more than 2 million euros? Um, we don't know yet, but we can probably guess more or less what it is. So it is actually quite a cool achievement of its own. So congratulations to the team of AMG for achieving that. Now, a couple of other things. Uh, let's talk quickly about the driver, by the way. Mauro Engel, very cool guy, enjoying having lots of conversations next to the track, on the track and off the track, on Instagram and sharing memes with each other. Mm. Some people, let's say the general public, not the people who know the Nürburgring, who know Mauro, might ask the question, well, hold on a second, MG1 was not like Formula 1, trademark, derived... Um, like technology car and they made some advertisement with Lewis Hamilton. Uh, why didn't they put Lewis Hamilton in, in the car? The answer is actually, I think th th there are multiple possibilities. First of all, I don't think Lewis has the time. Second of all, I don't think Lewis has the knowledge of the Nürburgring Nordschleife to go fast in comparison to Mara Engel. Uh, in that case, uh, actually, George Russell would have even more knowledge because back in the 2020, when Eiffel Grand Prix was taking place on the Nürburgring, he did a lap in a very wet, on a very wet track in the AMG GTR. But I don't remember Lewis driving it. So it would take too much time and probably just like the fact that I believe Formula 1 drivers are not allowed to drive motorcycles to avoid injuries and killing themselves. He probably would not be able, according to his contract, to take on such a dangerous activity such as doing a lap record around the Neuk Nordschleife. So maybe there is that. But my honest opinion, I think, is just not possible because of his track knowledge. Whereas Mara Engel has very big knowledge when it comes to the track. 
However, another side point that we should probably think about is that he's maybe not that familiar with the car itself, with the AMG One. I'm not that much into detail, but if we take it, for example, into consideration when he did the lap record with the Black Series, he's been driving AMG GT3 for many, many years in different series such as DTM, the Nürburgring, of course, the 24 hour races and other series. Um, so that's an important factor. So if maybe if he had more time with the car and knew how to deploy different systems, he would have gone faster, just giving him a benefit of the doubt when it comes to, uh, comes to the driver. Now, um, yeah, let's talk now about the things what I noticed while analyzing the lap itself the lap video uh, so as mentioned of course not optimal track conditions the first thing that i immediately noticed is that the car was scraping a lot and this has to do of course with the profile of the car it's a formula one car it's a very low it has a, a lot of downforce so this means it's scraping and on the track like the north life it's very bumpy you are going to run into these kinds of issues and keep that in mind for later on, because I believe that MG1 is not meant for a track as a North Life. It's also something that they say in their press release. But let's jump into the comparison. And for the comparison, I decided to compare it against the Black Series. And some of you may ask, like, hold on a second, why not with the previous lap record holder, the GT2 RS? Uh, well, first of all, I do believe that the Black Series could go faster than GT2 RSMR because I clocked it on its most recent attempt slightly less than a second of the GT2's lap time, but it was way too hot that day. Uh, so I believe they're pretty much equal, but more importantly, I know that both cars were using exactly the same telemetry system, the race navigator, so the, the way that we get the speed shown for the GPS satellites from the race navigator is identical, whereas with Porsche, it could be different. I don't know if they're using race logic or their own system. So that's why I decided to use it. In the end of the day, as mentioned, they are pretty much comparison. Uh, and at the end of the day, as, as mentioned, they are pretty much identical. Now, so when it comes to the first things, immediately when you notice when the car going through T13, then towards Hudsonbach at two kilometer sign, the very first fast, high speed corner the black series is doing 177 kilometers per hour whereas amg1 is doing impressive 185 thanks to the higher amount of downforce of course then as we fast forward towards flugplatz which is also a very high speed section corner um black series is doing 193 and amg1 is doing 199 through Schweden Kreuz, it gets interesting. We can see that Black Series is doing 291 maximum, but it keeps on climbing towards that speed, while AMG1 is doing 305 tops. Once it's going through the dip and goes uphill again over the crest, the speed starts to drop, and later it gets even more significant, I would say. Now, Schweden turn 235 for Black Series and 243 for AMG1, thanks to high downforce, of course. And the most impressive section of them all on the track is bottom of Foxhall. So Black Series is doing 250. I believe it could have gone faster because he clearly lifts due to, uh, again, very wet and cold circumstances that it was doing the lap record attempt on. But AMG1, 283. As far as I remember, this is the fastest speed that I've seen any production spec car do through that section of the track, so thumbs up. And to be honest, afterwards, it becomes pretty much identical for both the cars, and sometimes Black Series is even faster in certain sections or certain corners than AMG1 is. The only difference, the significant difference is Mood Curve, where Black Series is going uh, 179 and AMG1 is 197. And after that, it's, again, as mentioned, pretty much identical, only with the exception of the main straight, the Dettinger where the AMG1 is able to go, uh, as mentioned also in the press release, 338 kilometers per hour which is significant of course but that's about it now and the reason for that i need to go to the press release for that yeah so according to press release intelligent driving for optimal energy management the record lap in the hybrid super sports car with formula one trademark technology required not only driving skills but also an intelligent driving style mario angle used special energy management 
for the lap of 20.8 kilometer notch life. This means that he could not accelerate to the maximum possible speed on all sections of the track, but also had to manage his energy. To do this, he used the four-stage energy flow control EFC of AMG1 and let off the gas a little earlier in some sections known as lifting coats in technical jargon. In addition, Maro also used energy recovery in the braking phases. Thus, even on the long Döttinger, the high-performance battery still offered enough power for 338 km top speed. So first of all, I think this was indeed for them their purpose to uh, reach this high top speed on the main straight to gain the most possible time. But this brings us again to an important question, because you not only need to play with DRS, but also with the delivery of electrical management. Uh, and it's something that I guess a normal average customer will not be able of course they will know like okay right now i can deploy the full power but to the optimal like the full potential full extent that's going to be quite a different situation and again it shows also that he had to let go lift off uh so it was not providing the full power constantly because again here we're talking about the full well a very long track 20.8 kilometers 20.832 if you want to be precise and this is also something what what they said is uh, that uh, in the press release it says even though the AMG1 is certainly more at home on a Grand Prix circuit than on a Nordschleife. Uh, so it is again like a Formula 1 car, it's more at home on a GP like track than the Nordschleife. So what do, what do we make out of this? Can the car go sub 6 minutes 30? Yes, for sure. Optimal conditions, easy. With probably further optimization of the package because in defense, in a little bit of offense of AMG, uh, we've seen with the previous, like with the recent test drives of other journalists, Chris Harris, for example, that the car is still having some sort of like issues. Not saying that this car was having issues, but probably they definitely in the course of the years they can optimize the technology even further and probably can go definitely even faster maybe they will even develop even stickier tires who knows but uh, most importantly i do believe that the car can go faster then we need to also ask ourselves the question like uh eight seconds faster for a car that is like what five times more expensive than the other car than the slower car does it make worth it again we need to compare things with what they are a uh, Formula 1 based car is not going to perform well on the Nürburgring Nordschleife because this for the same reason why we don't have Formula 1 races here anymore because the car, the track is too, too bumpy, it is too long uh, for these types of cars. It will be interesting to see what the car can do in comparison, for example, on Hockenheim Ring in comparison to other cars of its similar class or the class below for a better representation of its performance window, I would say. So that will be more interesting. But it's still going to interesting to most importantly for the future owners and current owners and most importantly of course for AMG to see that they have the fastest car, the Fudashing spec car around the Nürburgring Nordschleife. And for everyone else who's saying like yeah but for less money you get better, better, as mentioned it's not black and white, the car is not really meant to break the Nürburgring record but to show that you can have the Formula 1 technology in a road car and can go extremely fast. This is something that I say to everyone who has been say, who says, for example, what is the best car in the world? Getting sidetracked here, but just giving you my opinion. Uh, Bugatti Chiron, very fast, off-road, an old Jeep would beat it. Vice versa, Jeep great for off-road, but for straight line acceleration would not be good. So for the same for AMG One, I think Formula One based would be great for GP tracks, of course, a collector's item, etc., etc. So. Long story short, great achievement, think the car can go a bit faster, definitely faster under ideal circumstances and overall a great feat and I'm happy, extremely happy that AMG has taken this car here to do this amazing feat because it's not cheap to bring these cars here to set them up to test them to develop them and then do a lap record and to be able to say that you have formula one trademark uh and then also never can watch life a lap record so um yeah lots of things but most importantly what do you think about it let me know in the comments so looking forward to hearing it from you and looking forward to seeing you in one of tomorrow's video of course at the never can watch life and hopefully we'll be able to do a lap in one of once <laughs> on the Nordschleife ourselves. But for that, does anyone have one? Can we go? Let me know. See you. Bye.